Hello, I am Jayanto Chatterjee and I am interacting with you on this course called Managing Services Contemporary Issues. As we discussed in the previous module, services have a very close relationship with goods and products and in many ways today in most activities in business, they are kind of together as a system. In the last module, we had this uh, slide which was the ending slide and this is where we start today. This is a simple way of looking at the taxonomy of services or how services can be classified. So, it is a 2 by 2 matrix which is uh, very popular in management. So, uh, we have here on one side that who or what is the direct recipient of the service. So, there we have people and possessions and on the x axis or on the vertical axis we have the nature of the service act. So, we have tangible and intangible, tangible actions and intangible actions. Now, combining this 2 by 2 uh, sets of concepts, you can see that we can easily classify different services that we are regularly using. So, when it comes to people as recipient of service and we are talking about tangible actions, then we have what we call people processing services like when you go for a haircut or you go and visit uh, the nearest health center for uh, some blood test or some pharmaceutical uh, procurement. So, these are tangible inputs to people where people and the inputs interact. So, again I would emphasize that a good haircut is not only provided by the barber, by the salon uh, professional, but also a good haircut needs your contribution. So, this always remember this co-creation element and keep watching that particular phenomenon emerging in front of you. Now, we can have also intangible actions and meant for people. And that will be like for example, this particular session that we are having an educational session, it is an intangible action directed at your mind and we are exchanging knowledge and attention and it is a kind of a mental stimulus processing as opposed to people processing. Then it could be like possession that means, some kind of device, some product where there are some tangible service actions as input. So, this could be the act of refueling or when you take something for refurbishing or maybe for disposal or for recycling. So, these are all elements of um, examples of tangible actions directed towards material objects possessions. And last quadrant is the one where intangible actions on possessions. So, this can be easily understood as your banking uh, or accounting, where there is an intangible information oriented interaction related to material possessions or money that you have and uh, therefore, uh, that becomes a separate category which we call information processing. So, people processing, possession processing, mental stimulus processing and information processing are the four kinds of services derived from the spectrum of tangibility and intangibility. And as later on we will see that these boundaries among these four quadrants are often diffused. So, there are different kinds of services which uh, sit between the two uh, quadrants and we will see uh, those examples as we go along. I am now with the explanation given to the first uh, module ending slide, I am moving to uh, the next module which is to understand 
why today we are so interested in service markets, service businesses, the service concept and what is happening around us today. So, services today dominate most economies and most interestingly all types of services businesses are growing very rapidly. So, services account for more than 60 percent of the GDP worldwide. According to the latest statistics in 2014, 59.9 percent again almost 60 percent of India's GDP came from services. I okay, will discuss that maybe in the next slide that how India has an interesting alternate path of economic development and where there are number of debates. So, we will briefly touch upon those debates, but suffice it to say that you take any economy around the world today and on the internet you can get list of all economies and all the GDPs and their components and you will find substantial significant part comes from the service sector. Also very important for you and for me and for all of us around that this sector has contributed most new employments and therefore, this is a growth engine. So, so much to say that in India for example, 3441,000 crores of rupees where the revenue generated by service businesses in 2014 and this has grown from the level of 1576, 15,000, uh, 1576,000 crores. And if you go in million as you know 10 million uh, so uh, is a crore, so that means we are looking at 15,760 million crore to million conversion. So, 15,760,000, ,000, so we are talking about billions and billions, but most importantly 1576 growing to 3441 between 2005 and 2014. So, we are looking at more than doubling in the economic output over a span of about 10 years. And as a result, this is a slide from 1976, but this trend is continuing. In different countries, the composition may be slightly different, but this is the trend. That means, in most developed economies, a significant came output came from agriculture, very rapidly agricultural output with respect to industry output diminished. So, industry dominated and then over time industry output was less compared to services and services output dominates today most in the most economies. As you will see in this previous graph that on the x axis we have time as well as per capita income. That means, there is a tight well researched well established correlation between the development of the economy. That means, there is more per capita income will enhance the demand for services, service business outputs will increase. So, in a way the level of service activity can tell us about the level of economic growth in a particular country. There are new situations as I was little while back mentioning that for example, in India from agriculture we did not go through that intermediate level of mass industrialization. Our industrial growth and service industry growth kind of happened together and service businesses, service outputs started dominating and as a result we have created a new kind of a structure. There are debates and uh, saying that as agriculture mechanizes the people who will get displaced from agriculture to find new employment, new gainful engagement. Services may not be good enough because services usually 
ask for people of higher caliber. Service professionals have higher level of knowledge competency and therefore, to take agricultural semi skilled or unskilled labor and find them gainful employment, people are arguing that we need refocus on manufacturing industries. But even that, even if that and that should happen, so even if that happens and we go on the right path, where we focus more and more on make in India, we are never going to discount the huge software industry, the huge knowledge based knowledge intensive service industry that we have built up today in India that will continue to be a growth engine. So, it is not an either or situation, we need therefore, growth in service, growth in manufacturing and as you will see in many ways highly competent and highly competitive manufacturing is well integrated with services. So, this evolution that is taking place is taking place due to technology changes. So, the product like an iPhone cannot be that successful without the service of iTunes. And today if you see most smartphones that you use, they are smart, you like and you spend hours with the screen of your phone, because of the many services, games, information, infotainment applications. So, the apps which are capsuled services make those products so much more productive, valuable, attractive. So, this kind of change in technology, change in government policy, social changes are changing the nature of demand and supply, changing the nature of competition. The emergence of Apple and its dominance in the mobile phone industry is a radical change in the competitive landscape of mobile phones and service thinking of a company like Apple contributes to that radical competitive strength that they have created, becoming one of the most valuable companies of the world. And services are also changing customers choices, power and decision making. And earlier it was said customer is the king, customer is the reason for our business, but today that is not a say so. Today it has to become this customer centricity human centricity has to become the key mantra, has to become the core philosophy of business and the service thinking, service philosophy, service logic of business has a big role to play in this paradigm shift from objects to people, from the renewed focus on the customer and engaging with the customers, involving the customer changing from we and they to us and that is the structure that we will take up in more detail in the next module. Thank you.